Hey guys, welcome to Data Tech, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at model calibration. What is it? What are the techniques used to calibrate a machine learning model? And also a practical exercise at the end of the video. So let's get started. For a machine learning classifier, it's desirable to have model predict probabilities instead of just crude final class labels, right? But unfortunately, not all machine learning models are capable of producing responses that can be directly interpreted as probabilities of the true likelihood of the event. In order for that to happen, we need to calibrate a ML model. So machine learning model calibration is the process of calibrating or tweaking the ML probabilities so they are not just bare numbers, but the true likelihood of an event and not just the final level. So if an ML model has been trained to detect a disease and it predicts 10 people to have diseases in the probability range of 0.8 to 0.85, then what we would expect is that out of 10 people, 8 to 8.5 people should actually have the disease or out of 100 people, 80 to 85 people should actually have the disease if the probability of having the disease in, in the range of 0.8 to 0.85. So uh, next is why do we need calibrated models, right? So model calibration as we have already seen is useful when ML models need to return probabilities or a score that represents the true likelihood of the event instead of just crude class labels or not. So it will be helpful when we are returning the true probability of an event like person having disease or not. Where if we say 0.6, then it is the actual probability of that person having the disease and it's the actual likelihood of the event. And also model calibration is useful when we need to combine scores of various models in some equation. In such scenarios, it's important that all ML models, no matter how they are trained, what is the uh, machine learning model or algorithm used for each independent model, independent of that, if all the machine learning models that are part of one equation are calibrated, then we can use them in one equation. So here, in such scenarios, calibration plays the part of normalizing the individual scores probabilities before combining. And why does a machine learning becomes miscalibrated, right? So most often when a model turns out to be calibrated or not, it depends on its intrinsic characteristic that what is the algorithm behind the machine learning model. Logistic regression, for instance, doesn't usually require extra post-trained calibrations as the probabilities it produces are actually well already well calibrated due to the loss function and its simple form. Its simple form, it's a linear model where uh, on top of log of odds, we use a sigmoid to uh, get the probabilities. So because of its simple form and the loss function, it's already well calibrated. While on the other hand, Gaussian knife base pushes probabilities close to 0 or 1 due to the underlying assumption of feature independence. So uh, usually it's miscalibrated. Random forest classifiers rarely return value 0 or 1 because they have average the response of multiple inner models. For neural networks, it's seen that simple neural networks with not very sophisticated or complicated architectures are usually well calibrated. But as the architecture gets complex, the networks are frequently poorly calibrated and need some calibrations. Also, sometimes because of class imbalance, the probabilities produced may be uh, inflated or deflated. So these are the reasons the prob uh, uh, probability of the ML model can become miscalibrated. Now, how to check whether the probabilities are calibrated or not? The most common way of checking the model's calibration is through the calibration plot. The plot is created by first taking data samples and getting the probabilities for each data point. The classifier probabilities, the range of probabilities for all the data points are now divided into multiple bins representing the range of possible outcomes that can come out of the model. For example, 0 to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 0 0.25. How many data points belong to those probabilities? We have bin the model predictions. For each bin, for a perfectly calibrated model, the percentage of positive samples is expected to same as the bin centers. That is, for bin 0 0.921, wherever the scores are between 0 0.921, we expect 95% of the samples to be positive. Then it's a perfectly well calibrated model if it's happening for all the bins. 
for a perfectly calibrated model we should observe a straight line the blue line the straight line corresponding to the identity function but normally this kind of s shape of the calibration curve is pretty common for ml models which basically means we are overestimating when predicting low probabilities and underestimating when predicting high ones the reason being if you see the probabilities are uh, very high but actual number of positive samples are low here so it's overestimating for low probabilities and underestimating for high probabilities a part of the visual check people also look for Braille score. The Braille score is the mean squared error between the predicted and the actual probability where it can take value between 0 and 1 and lower the better because 0 means perfect calibration while with predicted probabilities matching the observation perfectly. We would want the difference between actual and predicted as close as possible. So lower the Braille score better the uh, model calibration is. And what are the techniques used to calibrate the model if the model is not calibrated? The most popular calibration methods remains to be plat scaling, which is also known as the sigmoid method and isotonic regression. So first we will look at plat scaling. Plat scaling fits a logistic regression line to the calibration plot. It assumes that the calibration curve is as shaped, the only shape logistic regression can fit into. So what it actually does is logistic regression is fitted to the predicted probabilities as the uh, independent variable and true level as the target variable. So predicted probabilities are the x and y is the true level. Calibrating the model is then using the mapping or LR model prediction on top of any model uh, probabilities that are coming from. So basically uh, from whatever the sophisticated model used for some uh, application we take the probabilities fit a logistic regression with model pro probabilities as the input and output as the true level and whenever we have to correct or calibrate the model probabilities we will take the probabilities coming out of that sophisticated model and get the probabilities from the logistic regression as the calibrated probability. So here we can see the orange line was the actual probability and the red one is the calibrated. The overestimated model probability at the lower region is deflated because here the red line is below the orange line. So the calibrated probabilities have been deflated in the lower region and inflated at the upper region where uh, the actual probabilities were uh, underestimated. So, so in this way the plat scaling works where it fits a logistic regression on top of the model probabilities and the true label as the target variable. The other method popular is isotonic regression. I have a complete video on isotonic regression. I will add the link of that video in the description section. So what isotonic regression does, it, it fits a non-decreasing free flow line to the sequence of points to make the line close to the original points as possible. When applied to the problem of calibration, the technique aims to perform a regression on the original calibration curve with predicted probability as the x explanatory variable and actual target, actual label as the dependent one. The main advantage of using isotonic regression over plate scaling is that it doesn't require the curve to be as shaped. That is, uh, in logistic regression, the model has a parameterized form, uh, coefficients and intercept, but isotonic regression is a free form model without any functional form. So it doesn't require the model to have S shape or any other shape. It's a functional less uh, model. Its downside is because of its non-parameterized and non-functional form, it's sensitive to outliers. It can overfit quite easily and thus it works best for large data sets. It's often recommended if the calibration set has more than 1000 examples. Uh, so what is the impact on the performance, on the final accuracy and also we'll do a practical exercise. So calibration directly modifies the output of the machine learning model because the output probabilities are passed through this uh, calibration models, right? Which can be logistic regression or isotonic regression. So it modifies the output of machine learning model. Even though the calibration maintains the monotonicity of the outputs, that is as the probabilities increases in the actual uh, model, here also the probabilities will increase or remain same, but they will maintain the monotonicity, but still because of this approximation methods like logistic regression or isotonic regression, it is possible that the accuracy can slightly be impacted. In practice, it is often observed that calibrated models are slightly less accurate than the uncalibrated counterpart and difference however is rarely large it's marginal but the benefit that calibration offers are more important that is 
the probabilities becomes representative of true likelihood of the event and also if you are combining various models it's better for each of them to be calibrated because it acts as a normalization for the models probabilities and next what we will do is we will experiment it do a practical exercise to check the impact of calibration on the diabetes data sets so uh, we will look at this kaggle notebook and i will make the link of this kaggle notebook also available in the description section so here we have a diabetes data set and uh, these are the features that number of times the person has been pregnant plasma glucose diastolic blood pressure tricep skin fold 2 hours serum insulin body mass index diabetes age and the status whether the person actually have the disease as positive or not tested positive or not next what we did was we looked at the positive and negative samples and we also did an eda that how the distribution of each feature is we can see that the uh, that the classes do have uh, the the features do have differentiation power but also there is an overlap so it's a bit tough problem to solve and slightly the classes are imbalanced as well next is we did a train test split where we splitted 80% of the data for training and 20% we kept aside for the testing we can test any model for uh, whether it's calibrated or not because calibration is a property agnostic of model but here we looked at gaussian naive bayes because usually we know gaussian naive bayes is not very well calibrated because of its intrinsic property where it assumes the features are independent and uh, first of all we looked at the accuracy the confusion matrix and we can see that reason is 66% recall is 70% and f1 score is somewhere around 68% and area under curve is 0.82 the model has f1 score uh, which is 0.68 68% and let's check how calibrated the model is and also we will check the prior score of it so this is how the calibration curve looks like where it deviates from the straight line and uh, next we will see if we can perform some calibration on the training data so that uh, the the calibration curve can improve we performed calibration where blue was the original uh, probabilities and the orange ones are the logistic regression which is flat scaling calibrated model and the green one is isotonic regression we can see that isotonic regression has the ideal curve because it is prone to overfitting it has overfitted the probabilities and it has made it perfectly calibrated but we need to see the performance on the test set and even uh, in the uh, training set we can say the see the prior score lower the better it's better for both uh, flat scaling and isotonic regression much better than the original probabilities in terms of calibration now we see how the calibration looks for the test set because it should actually work for the unseen data points which is the test set even in the test set we can see that the blue ones are the actual model probabilities the orange one are from the flat scaling and green one is from the isotonic regression and the green line is very close uh, relatively very close to the ideal line compared to the other two and that is also visible in the prior score the prior score is lowest for the isotonic regression line so in this model we will prefer that the model probabilities in this naive bayes model we will prefer the model probabilities actually comes calibrated from a isotonic regression model so because the calibration and, uh, curve also looks better and also the, in terms of prior score the score is lower which is better for isotonic regression and also for flat scoring compared to the uh, actual plain model which is naive bayes and uh, in terms of accuracy we have seen that the calibration doesn't have very huge impact on the model accuracy it slightly changes here also we can see that the f1 score for plain model was 68% for flat scaling is also 68.46 slightly increased and for isotonic 69% it slightly increased on the better part so so uh, marginal difference but the uh, uh, calibration has improved next i also looked at what was the actual probabilities and how what the calibration flat scaling and isotonic regression has done to the predictions here we can see these were the actual predictions and what flat scaling does is it's fits a kind of 
line to it which is slightly s shaped not not very prominent s shape but still uh, that s shape is slightly visible while on the other hand isotonic regression fits this free form line where we can see it uh, it has a steep increase and then it's flat a steep increase and it's flat because of the free form or functional less form of the isotonic regression and also the same curve, uh, same probabilities I also uh, analyzed over an Excel where the difference can further be seen that what the calibration has done is in the lower range where the model was uh, under predicting it has increased the model probabilities in the calibrated probabilities are more than the model probabilities in the lower range. Calibration probabilities increase, isotonic regression can continue to remain at the same value. So in the lower range, the calibrated probabilities have been slightly increased by both the models. And in the later range, the model uh, probabilities, the calibrated model probabilities have been lower, deflated than the original model probabilities 0 0.46, 0 0.47, but here is reduced to 41, 42 and around 42. And also one more thing, the free form property of isotonic regression as the model probabilities increases for logistic regression it will always increase but for isotonic regression it can either increase or remain at the same value here we can see the calibrated probabilities uh, remain at the same value even if the model probabilities increases so that is the free form property of isotonic regression so that's it for this video in which we looked at what model calibration is where we tweak the model probabilities to, re to make it representative of the true likelihood of the event and it's useful when we want, uh, for example, like disease kind of problem or fraud detection where probabilities to be the indicative of true likelihood of the event. And also it's useful when we are uh, combining various machine learning models in the equation, each model is calibrated or normalized, it's better. And also we looked at two interesting ways of calibrating the machine learning models, which are plat scaling and isotonic regression, along with the practical exercise to understand them better. Hope you enjoyed the content, enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. Bye.